please welcome the Executive Director of Students for Life, Kristen Hawkins. You know, I've always said that my story really isn't that extraordinary. I've been a Christian my whole life. I was raised in a pro-life home. But I never really thought about abortion until I signed up to volunteer at a local pregnancy help center. I remember my first day clearly. I went into the center thinking I was there to answer the phones and to organize the diapers in the supply closet. I had no idea that I soon would be empowered, empowered to sit down and talk with women who were coming to the center believing that abortion was their only option, that I was going to be empowered to save a life. Ladies and gentlemen, I have something to admit to you tonight. I've been wrong. You see, my story, which is probably a lot like yours, is extraordinary. It's extraordinary because you and I were created by a God and chosen to live now in the United States of America in 2002, 2012. <laughs> I forget my age. <laughs> he chose us, sinners, ordinary people to take a stand and to do extraordinary life-saving works through him. Since 1973, over 54 million children have been killed by legal abortion in our country. Precious children who were created in God's image and who just like you and I are intrinsically valuable, yet they were thrown in the trash because their mothers were deceived. Their mothers were deceived and told, you can't have that child and continue your education. You can't have that baby and continue to feed your other babies. You can't have that baby and stay with your boyfriend, your husband, whoever. And I know, 54 million is an impossible number to get your head around. That's more deaths than all casualties of war our nation has sustained, more deaths than any disease, more deaths than Middle Passage, more deaths than the Holocaust. But think of it a different way. In fact, if you were born after January 22nd, 1973, I want you to raise your hand right now. Congratulations. Those who have raised their hands are survivors of legal abortion in our lifetime. We survived, but a third of our generation did not. Our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our best friends, our husbands and wives, they are missing today because of abortion. But brothers and sisters, there is reason for joy. And I hope you can see it because the tide is turning in our nation. More Americans now than ever understand that abortion kills a human being and is morally wrong. And despite the ruthless attack against life these past four years in Washington, D.C., momentum is on our side. And I believe God the creator of our universe, the master of all, has united us here tonight. He's united us, ordinary people, sinners. He's chosen us to be his hands and feet to abolish abortion in our lifetimes. But in order to fulfill this vision of abolishing abortion and living out God's will for us, there's two things we must do. We must pray and act guided by a courageous love. First, we must pray for those public officials who we elect and are about to elect. We must pray for those who are hurting and work actively against us every day. We must pray for the pre-born, their mothers and their fathers and those women who've already chosen abortion. And finally, we must pray to our God and ask him where we need to engage in this epic battle. And then after we've prayed, living courageous love, we must act. 
We must register to vote and make sure we know when we need to vote and where we need to vote. And then we need to go to every single person sitting in our pews, in our workplace, who we know is a Christian and is pro-life, and make sure they're registered to vote. And they understand they can't waste their vote this November. We have to get out on the streets and we have to go door to door and talk to our neighbors and friends about abortion. And finally, on November 6th, we've got to get out and vote. And if you can, take the day off work and drive everybody you know who's pro-life to the polls. As Tony mentioned, in 2000, in 2000, the choice between a pro-life and a radical pro-abortion presidency came down to 500 votes in one state. Your vote matters. It doesn't matter what state you live in because you're speaking for someone who can't be here today. But friends, don't stop on November 6th. Being pro-life is not something you do every four years. It's something you do every single day, no matter how old or how young you may be. It's the way you live your life. In addition to electing public officials, we have to be out there providing hope and healing and changing the hearts of our neighbors, passing state and national legislation to protect the preborn, their mothers and fathers from Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. We have to be there as a church to welcome back our daughters when they call and say, I made a mistake, I'm pregnant. We have to be there in the schools, starting Students for Life groups, educating and helping those most targeted by the abortion industry, this generation. And we also have to be out there in our communities, making abortion unwantable by providing support and tangible resources. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day that God is calling you. He's calling you to act courageously and to love courageously and to rise up. Rise up out of your pews, rise up off your couches, and rise up out of your dorm rooms. Because today, tomorrow, and the next day, babies are scheduled to die. His babies are scheduled to die. Your babies are scheduled to die. And there are mothers and fathers whose heartbreak is certain. And just like how our God sent his only son to earth, so he may die on a cross so that we may have everlasting life. We must to begin to live our lives so that others may live. I challenge each of you today, dedicate your short time here on this earth, your life, to something bigger than yourself. Love courageously and be his hands and feet no matter what it costs you. It's our time to abolish abortion. And you survived, and you were chosen. Today, I pledge to defend life always, and I hope you will do the same. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you so much. You know, Kristen, one of, the, one of the things that gives me great hope for America is that I believe America is growing in its understanding of the sanctity of human life, and nowhere is that more evident than with our young people. That's right. This is the first youth generation since the handing down of Roe and Doe in 1973 that's actually pro-life. Most people believe you're pro-abortion. As you get older, you get more pro-life. But that's not the case with this generation and the one behind us because of ultrasound. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Kristen Hawkins, thank you so much. Thank you. By the way, Pastor.